a certain foxy foxy and a particular little bunny lay asleep together. Judy's long ears lay against Nick, one on his neck and the other against his snout. Rain poured outside, helping the two animals sleep. Suddenly, Nick woke up. He looked to see the time, but the clock just flashed the default 12 o'clock. The storm probably took out the electricity for a second. Then again, midnight was probably the time. It used to be that Nick would go to sleep around this time, back when he was hustling. But now that he was partners with Judy on the Zootopia police force, he'd usually be hitting the sack before nine. And sometimes he'd wake up in the middle of the night, feeling rested early. This was the first time Judy let Nick sleep with her. He used to think they were just partners and not, well, partners, but he was always grateful for Judy, pulling him out of the rut he was stuck in all his life. He always liked and liked her deep down. Nick lifted himself up to get a good look at Judy's beautiful face, her smooth gray fur, her big giant eyes her tiny twitching nose. Wait, Nick noticed. Why was Judy's nose twitching? Was she having a bad dream? What was wrong with her? Nick gently rubbed Judy's arm to soothe her. It was weird. Nick always thought that Judy's nose twitching was cute. Just like her ears going up and down, it was a beautiful form of expression. But of course, her nose twitching meant she was scared, and it was offensive to call bunnies cute. Slowly, Judy began to wake up. She let out a big heavy yawn and stretched her little arms out. Then she looked over her shoulder to get a good look at Nick. Nick, did you wake me up? She groaned. Didn't mean to, he assured. Why? Did I interrupt a good dream there, Carrots? He was trying to be witty like always, but there was a trickle of uneasiness. With her nose twitching, her dream was surely not good. No, she muttered. What were you dreaming about? Nick asked. Nothing, Judy claimed. And just like that, there was the slightest twitch of her nose again. Nick thought to himself, how to get my little bunny to be honest with me. Then he had a thought. He let out a heavy sigh. Judy, he whispered. Judy looked at Nick. She knew he was going to get serious whenever he called her by her name, as opposed to carrots. Yes, Nick? I never said sorry for saying all those things about you. Nick said feebly. What things? That you'd never be a real cop. That you're just a dumb bunny. That no one cares about you or your dreams. That I'm a stuffed animal who needed to get back to her box, Judy retorted, smirking. Nick shook his head, ashamed. Then there was a brief silence. You're the best cop ever, Nick continued. And you're very smart. And I really do care about you, Judy. More than anyone I've ever known. 
Judy smiled sweetly at Nick. She gently touched his cheek. I care about you too, Nick, she whispered. Will you listen to that? Came a voice from down the hall. Disgusting. Came another. Footsteps faded off down the hall. Nick just glared at the door. All these jerks who came after them just because they were different species. Yeah, we're gonna give each other diseases and reduce the population. Get out of here, Nick thought to himself. Then he noticed Judy staring down, looking all sad. Hey, Judy, look, Nick, Judy interrupted. She was silent for a bit. Nick placed a gentle arm around her shoulder and snuggled in close to her. Just by looking at Nick's face and feeling his arm around her tight, she knew she could tell him anything. Nick, I lied, said Judy. Nick tightened his grip on Judy's shoulder. About what? asked Nick. I did have a dream, said Judy, her voice quivering. I dreamt that I woke up and I told you good morning, but it wasn't you in bed with me. It was another rabbit and he was like, so you are in a relationship with a fox. <sighs> then, then he's jeering at me, and I run out of the apartment, and the hallway's filled with animals laughing and throwing things at me. I kept running down the hallway, but, but it never ended. And I was calling out your name, and you weren't. Judy a warm, loving hug as she began to cry. Shh, shh, it's okay, Nick whispered softly as he rubbed the back of Judy's head. Judy hugged back and she slowly began to calm down. She wiped her tears away. Look at me, Judy, said Nick. Judy did as Nick told her. I want to tell you something. Nick began. You remember when you came and found me under the bridge? When you started breaking down in front of me because all of those things you said? Judy sighed. She still couldn't stop thinking about how she told the press her predators were reverting back to their savage ways. She hurt Nick so bad. Nick, I'm sorry, I... Judy, stop, stop, Nick ordered. From the moment you started crying, I knew I wanted to be with you. Because even though you hurt me, I knew you didn't mean it. I knew you cared. Judy smiled amidst her sniffles. I wish I told you sooner, Nick continued. I, I was worried about what everyone else would say. Nick stared downward in shame. Judy put that familiar comforting paw on Nick's arm. Nick looked Judy in the eyes. I'm sorry, Judy, he said. I should have been stronger. You are strong, Nick. Judy reassured. And there's nothing wrong with this. You've been so kind and supportive to me. I wouldn't want to be with anyone else. You have no idea how lucky I am to have you. Nick took Judy's paw. You're nowhere near as lucky as me, he said. The two animals 
girls just looked each other longingly in the eyes. Judy fixated on Nick's fiery red fur, pointy ears, and chiseled, chiseled face. <laughs> Disgusting, Judy scoffed. Nick, you are the most handsome, charming fox in the entire world. Judy gently touched Nick's face. Nick did the same to Judy. You're the most beautiful, sweetest little bunny in the entire history of the world, Judy, he kindly replied. Then Judy laid Nick down on his back. She got on top of him, planting her small bunny weight on Nick's strong, strong chest. You can call me cute, she whispered sweetly. Then Nick placed his paw in the back of Judy's head, pulling her in. The two planted a soft, tender kiss on each other's lips. Then Judy nestled her head under Nick's chin. And just like that, the two of them fell right back asleep as Nick gently stroked the long, furry ears. <laughs> 